For him, if he can come on, y'all. Don't give up on God because you won't give up on you. Jesus. above all and I pray that this morning wherever you find yourself may the God who is able cause that grace of his ability to meet that need in the name of Jesus it's been a week of praying and fasting and trusting God it's been a great time of prayer and what an honor to be gathered again in his presence this morning, we are honored to have one of the great servants of the kingdom, a man I've come to love and to respect, the former president of the Ghana Baptist Convention, and currently helping the Ghana Christian Council in so many areas, a great man of God, and also the chancellor of the Ghana Baptist University College. Uh, a pastor of pastors and married for almost 40 years and ministering, preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ for almost 40 years. And the good news is that this morning he's here with his bride. Praise the Lord. And come on with a TBC welcome. Shall we receive you, Mama? Give everybody a wave offering. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Such a great example. Come on, shall we put our hands together as we receive Pastor Steve Asante. Hallelujah. Hey, I said hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord been quite some time and I tell you I miss you people because I love I love Trinity and uh, I want to thank Pastor Kinsley for this unique privilege given to me to share in his puppet ministry in this great church and I, I feel so highly honored to be here this morning shall we bow for prayer Father we come humbly 
before your gracious presence this morning. And ask you, God, that the Holy Spirit of God will interpret your word to our hearts. Give me grace to be faithful to your word. And let me serve your people you love so dearly in the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ alone will be glorified in the exposition of the word of God. May it transform lives and encourage people. May it heal the sick and help some program struggling and groping in darkness and looking for spiritual strength. Lord, they will find in Christ a beacon of hope and strength to press on in spite of the mess in which humanity finds itself. Lord, we give you all the praise for we have asked this in Jesus' name and for his glory's sake. Amen. Amen. Shall we sit? Ancient words ever true changing me and is changing you we have come with open heart oh let the ancient west in. hallelujah ancient west. oh ever true changing me and it's changing you we have come yeah we do been hard oh let the ancient words ring hallelujah ancient words yeah ever true changing me and it's changing you Ah, we have come, yea, we do be not. Hallelujah, let the ancient words be. We have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient words be. Shall we? Go to the scriptures. Go with me to the book of Romans and chapter number one. We're taking the first six verses very quickly. And then we go to the last chapter um, for another a couple of verses there too. So we're reading from Romans chapter number one. We're engaging chapter number one, verse number one through verse number six. I'm reading from the New International Translation of the scriptures. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, I want to hear a big amen and verse number five is the focal text for our, our message this morning. Through him, that is Christ, we received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience. It's interesting that I've, I've, I didn't know the theme. All the Gentiles to what? Obedience. That's the focus. That's the goal of proclamation. The goal of the, the apostolic ministry of the great apostles of old. To the obedience that comes from faith. For his name's sake. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called. Now you could, you could even put it in this way. Who are called to the same obedience. Will you say amen? amen? Now shall we go quickly to the last chapter of this great um, letter to the church of God, to the people of God, to the ecclesia. Let's go to chapter number 16. And let's engage verse number 19 and then we will jump to 25 to 27. Verse number 19 of 
Romans chapter number 16. Let's read what the Holy Scripture says. Everyone has heard about your obedience. Everyone, you, the church in Rome, everyone has heard about your obedience. That defines your faith. So I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. 25. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with, the, with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past. But now revealed and made known through the prophet, prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. Will you say amen? Now, you see, that's why I, I, I'm glad I'm a Baptist. We believe in allowing the scriptures to speak. I'm not speaking the scriptures is speaking. All I'm doing is to try the Holy Spirit to expound the mind of God. Will you say amen? amen. That's all. We're talking about obedience. The proof of our love for God. That's a, it's a simple, it's not complicated. Obedience is the proof of our love for God. Brethren, healthy people, healthy people are normally very productive. Now, listen to what I said. Are normally, because sometimes we can be healthy and for some reasons, you know, things don't go the way they go. But normally healthy people are very productive. If it's, it's, even if you go to, the, to plant life or the plant life, healthy plants are healthy, are, are productive. If you go to the marine life, aqua life... Uh, the same thing happened in the, in the marine world. A healthy church will therefore be very productive. Our world today is very, very sick. And I don't have to bore you with all the mess in which we find ourselves in a typical postmodern era where you are okay, I'm okay. Don't, don't judge me. You know? I'm not okay, you are not okay. So you go your way, I'm going my way. To the extent that we are in a mess. That, you, you know the, the metropolitan world is in such a mess. They don't know how to handle them. Why? Because if you are disconnected from God, you begin to rot. Don't get disconnected. Because there is no way you can stay pure and enjoy life if you are disconnected. Will you say amen? Yeah. Don't get disconnected with this world. Because this world is gasping for breath. It's about to die. And don't die with it because there is life in you. And you know, in the, I love the Greek. You know, in the Greek, there are two words for life. One is bios, from which we get biology, the study of life, plant or animal. And you know that, very elementary. But then there's another word, zoe. Z-O-E, or if you are British, you know. <laughs> See, Z. Oh, uh, um, is it what? Oh, now they've changed it. It's still, still driving on the right. <laughs> and and, and it's, it translates the God kind of life. And the very moment you open your heart to Christ, and this happened to me nearly 50 years ago in, in my secondary school, I walked into a scripture in your meeting, I heard the gospel, and my life was changed on that day. So a life came into me, and life became completely different. I give him praise for this grace. And, and, and what the apostle Paul is saying is this. If this thing, kind of transaction takes place in your life, where God communicates his life through the Holy Spirit into you, it results in obedience. Now, if, if it doesn't happen, then there is something wrong somewhere. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, um, even manufacturers these days, you know they, what they are, they are calling millions of cars. Something went, went wrong. With all the computers and whatnot, something went wrong. But let me tell you, if there's a retouch from God, nothing goes wrong. Nothing. Nothing. The hymn says, The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon. 
Hallelujah. And I, I, I'm telling you that this morning, we have not come here to judge you. We have come here to encourage you. <laughs> you didn't come to this place to be judged. You came here to be encouraged. And the fact is that you can take life. Lay hold on life and thou shalt see that Christ is all in all to thee. These days I've become a revivalist for the big Methodist churches in Ghana. So I love singing Methodist. If I want to go back, I'm, I'm doing an anniversary program for those of you from Accra, Ghana, Mount Olivet Methodist Church, 40th anniversary. And, and I'm so much excited about it. They have just put up a new auditorium that will see 2,000 people. God is doing something. And, and the joy of it is that the moment Christ communicates his life into you through the Holy Spirit, that you will have the desire to obey God. You're talking about tithing. My God, these days my wife and I, in fact, for a long time, it's, tithing is kindergarten stuff. Kindergarten stuff. What Calvary has done for me. I'm not even thinking about one tenth. If those days when they were killing bulls and what goats, they were paying one tenth. Me, arrested by grace. Ah. My Lord, my life, my way, my end. Accept the praise I bring. Everything about me belongs to him. Hallelujah. Everything. Hallelujah. Church. <laughs> you know, when, when God's life comes into you, things change. Now I want us to look at some of the key issues which arise. You know, what then are the attitudes of, uh, I mean, God descends in every act of obedience. First, the example of Christ. The example of Christ should motivate us to be obedient. Amen? Christ's own example. Now, if you look at Philippians 2 and verse number 8, one of the great Christological passages about Jesus, he said, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Not just ordinary death, but death on the cross. The most clear, the, 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 the western form of uh, uh, capital punishment man has ever invented in those days and the Romans invented crucifixion and Jesus was humble in fact it is believed that on the cross when he was impaled on that cruel tree he was actually naked he was naked we put some cloth around his no no he was naked he was stripped all who were crucified were stripped naked and Jesus had to go through all that humiliation. At a point, he, if I was witnessing to the British, this British gentleman who brought us here, and uh, he said, my nephew died, and since then I've lost faith. And eventually we saw that he has never had faith. He's never had it. And I, as I was witnessing, witnessing to him, I said, oh, why? Oh, many, all of us have why. Even Jesus asked the father why. That, that actually shocked, shocked him. Say, so, uh, Jesus, he asked why. We have many whys, but there are many, many more reasons why we should stop asking why. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Church, Jesus' is own example. Even death on the cross. What an example. Father, not my will, but you are will. Matthew 26, 39, in the event of 42, 42, now listen, look, have you heard the name Perpetua or Felicity? These girls, young ladies, were from Africa here. They were from Africa. I mean, today is it Algeria or Tunisia, thereabout, in the Maghreb region anyway. And the Roman Empire, the governor had made some law that the church was no, no longer acceptable. So Christianity had become what we call religio illicita, unaccepted religion. And they had prepared them for baptism. And then the order came, no baptism. And the felicity and 
uh, Felicity was, was perpetual as um, a house kind of helper or help. He said, Mom, what are we going to say? We are going to go for baptism. A young lady of 22 years, married to a noble, firstborn son, very, very, a, a, a baby. He said, no, but they say they will kill you. Don't you care about your son? He said, when I die for my faith, God will take care of my child. Yeah. I'll prefer my child going with me than to disobey God. Church, the time has come for our obedience to mature to the point where we'll be willing to die for our faith because even Muslim girls and boys are being blown apart for the cause of Islam. Wake up, Christians. Wake up. The time has come for us to be so much committed to our God. We are willing to make the gospel known no matter how uh, many abuses and insults they will heap upon us. And you know, one of the things I've come to realize is that it's not just a question of the Holy Spirit. Now, don't miss, I, I mean, I am charismatic to the core. If you count two charismatics in the world, I should be amongst them. I'm a convinced charismatic, a theologian charismatic. Now, let me tell you something. It's not about the Holy Spirit. It's about conviction. Now, let me why, why am I saying this? Look at the Mormons and their commitment. Look at the Jehovah's Witnesses and their commitment. Look at the Muslims and their commitment. So it's not just the Holy Spirit. It's about conviction. And most of us don't engage the Bible enough to have that conviction. I challenge you henceforth, wake up and engage the Bible. Let your heart just flow through the scriptures and then you have conviction. And when you have conviction, then you have commitment. Will you say amen? amen. It's so important for us to think along that line. Even old apostle Paul, at the very end of his death, of his life, when the Lord had revealed to him that he was going to give up his life, he said, you bring me the parchment. I want to meditate on the written word. Hallelujah. I want to meditate on the written word. Sometimes my wife and I will spend hours just, just, and you know what we say in our house when we come to the word, dear, what do we say? When we come to engage the word, what do we say we have come to do? We have come to be washed and to eat. Give her a hand. We have come to be washed and to what? Eat. In my language, we say, Yabai didie and yabai jariye. No, no, sorry, sorry. I, I won't say I can't think again. This is, this is international service. We say amen. Ghanaians will want to always speak their language. <laughs> amen. So Jesus is our example. And you see, felicity and perpetual were killed. Were thrown to the lions. They died. In fact, a day or a week before they were killed, Felicity had a dream, and in the dream, she was asked to climb a ladder, you know, and as she was killing, you know, going up, at the foot of the ladder, he, she saw a lot of wild animals, you know, lions, and uh, what do you have, pythons, and, and tigers, and there was this old man at the, at the other end, on, on, on the top of the ladder. He said, my daughter, climb up, walk amongst them. They have no power to harm you. Amen. And she walked through them and climbed and got up. And when she got there, the old man heard her and said, welcome home. When he comes, a glorious king, all oh, his round, some home. To bring then anew this song we will sing. Hallelujah. What a sea. Hallelujah. What a sea. So, brethren, the Example of our Lord, and because of the brevity of my time, we cannot go into much, so much, but Jesus' example, and even look at the examples of the apostles. 
<laughs> the good apostle Paul says something in, uh, in, in Second Corinthians and chapter number 5 in the environment of 14. Let me just take you there. I love it so much. It, it, it's, it's one of my favorite passages. Second Corinthians and chapter number uh, 4. Uh, sorry, chapter number 5, verse 14. Look at what the good apostle Paul says here. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says and I read. He says, for Christ's love compels us. Did you hear that? Christ's love does what? Compels us. Because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Very good logic. And then he goes on in verse number 15. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died for them and was raised again. Hallelujah. Then he goes on and on and on and on. Then in 17 he says, therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old. The, the new has come. The old is gone. The new, the new is here. And, and I love the, the adjectives used in the Greek. The word new, kainos, and there are two, basically two adjectives in the Greek for new. One is kainos, one is neos. Kainos is new in quality. If any man is in Christ, he's a kainos creature. The same stature, the same height, the same complexion, the same ethnic background, the same race, the same everything. And yet, with the touch of heaven, with the touch of heaven, with the touch of heaven, that indelible touch, that eternal touch, that person is completely transformed. He will struggle, but I tell you, he is new. Yeah. As a kindness creature. Not neos, new in time, but new in quality. You come in Chroma say new colonialism, a new time of colonialism that has emerged in time. But that was his kindness, new in quality. Transformed by the power of God. Will you say amen? amen. And then he, you, you, so the apostles also bear testament to the fact that their submission, their commitment to God should motivate us to obey the Lord. But then, another truth is the fact that it is an expression, actually obedience defies the genuineness of our faith. <laughs> if I'm obedient, it defies my faith. How do I know that you are a child of God? How do I know you have faith? James does a very good thesis on this in his letter, right? James, that, that's the argument of the whole, the thesis of the whole of the letter of James. He said, look, if you say you have faith, be practical enough for us to see that you have faith. Let it be seen in your life. Let it become manifest, evident in your life that you have faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He who has faith. I remember an incident. And I, I share this. I don't need this for my anything. I, I, uh, my, my, my associate has uh, two daughters. and um, One has just finished a medical school. The one is in the, just finished writing her exam to go into residence. At the, those of you from Ghana, the KNUS, at the Confernoche Hospital. And when the girl passed, to go to the university to, to do medicine. She had seven A's and top B. In Britain, the government, or US, other, in, in serious places, full scholarship. It is only in Africa that you go to university by protocol. I don't know what protocol has to do with academics. Oh, Africa. May God have mercy on us. I drove straight to the, uh, the vice chancellor's office because during his investiture Thanksgiving service, he invited me to preach at the university for him. So I went to his office and said, brother, what is wrong? So, so if you have come an earlier on, I would have added him here to my list. And I said, that's not the question. The question is, why, what is happening? He said, you have protocol list from the castle, from the seat of government, and from the king's palace in Kumasi. Leadership. I think that's the problem in Africa. And then we came back and he sat on the seat in my office and said, about this, this is going to be difficult. I don't know where I'm going to go. And the Holy Spirit touched me and said, um, could you have help? 
and has some $3,000 on me. I said, Kofi, I'm going to give you $3,000. I said, Papa, how much is your salary? I said, it's not about salary. It's about obedience to God. I have heard the Holy Spirit clearly. And I gave the money. And I tell you, the following week, I was invited to a place to speak. And God did more than I had given away. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Brethren, you see, I mean, when I come to church, my checkbook actually belongs to him. <laughs> it belongs to him. If God blesses my life, it's not a question of a new this and a new that. Yeah, we need some comfort, so yeah, go for it. But remember, you are only a steward. In fact, I have a book coming. I've taken so much time. And the title is Total Kingdom Stewardship. As of when I am through with that book, I want to invite myself. <laughs> because let, let me tell you that stewardship is some and, and you see king, total kingdom stewardship. Listen to the, the, what is underneath. The believer's response to God's grace. For me, that is what stewardship is about. It's a response to grace. And you will never be a good steward if you don't understand grace. If the grace of God has arrested you and continues to form you, you'll be a good steward. You will never struggle about tithing. Oh my God, tithing. Look, let me tell you, a young man who about four years ago bought 20 brand new buses for Scripture Union, Garfes, Baptist Convention, some to Pentecost, some to Presbyterian Church of Ghana. He said, Papa, all the money I get, if it were just about my food and where to stay, God wouldn't have blessed me with so much. He understands stewardship. May God give you the same grace. And, then, and, and, and so it's an expression of genuine faith. If I understand what it means uh, to, to have faith. Look, look at this woman in Second Kings chapter number 4. Elisha is going up and down. He said, no, this man is a man of God. Let's make him a place. Put some simple finish, finish, uh, finishing and anytime he comes, he will rest. So, Elijah was, we don't know how long it took, but we are told that one day Elisha comes and he said, call the woman. And the woman comes and he said, um, what can I do for you? He said, nothing. She was so self-sufficient, you know, maybe some businesswoman, rich. And then the guy just said, no, no, but he has no child. He said, call, call her back. You have no child. A year by this time, you are going to have it. Say, hey, don't let me make you lie. It won't happen. I'm putting some words into her mouth because she had gone through so much. Like it happened in Mark chapter 5 with the woman who had gone, had the issue of blood for 12 consecutive years and with the protracted nature of her sickness and the uh, you know, prohibitive nature of Jewish laws in Le Le Leviticus and chapter you know, 15 and verse number, is it 26 or thereabout? And then with the, 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 the presence of the crowd, he said, I will touch the hem of his garment. She pressed on and pressed on and pressed on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Church, we don't have much time. Let me run away. But this woman, you know, I love this story. This woman, she was not, listen, she even, did, excuse me to say, don't misinterpret me. She didn't fast. She didn't even ask. Her giving was her conversation with heaven. You may write it down. You are giving is your conversation with heaven. Let me tell you, hands for, you write it down. This is a very important statement. You are giving. When, the moment you drop something into God's basket, offering bowl, you have engaged heaven in a serious conversation. It may be about your health, about your children's school fees, about some spiritual you know, forces working against you. The moment you begin to open up and give to God with sincerity of faith, you have engaged heaven in a serious conversation. Will you say amen? amen? Obedience. Obedience. Huh. It is also the demonstration of submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Obedience is. Hmm. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6 verse 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Matthew 7, 22. 
Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? <laughs> so, yeah, I know you did. But look at your secret life. Matthew 7, uh, Matthew 25, 11. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open us. They all called him Lord. But only few were obedient to their Lord. My brethren, if we love him and we have submitted to Christ and he is the Lord of our lives, we want to obey him. Look at the example of Abraham in Genesis 22. And look at the circumstances. An only child. And it's interesting that the contest tells us that, you know, Hagar and, and her son were gone. <laughs> and sometimes God will ask you to do things when things are tough. And that's where God will challenge you about who you truly are. The church is building, there's, a, there's some development, and God will challenge you ahead oh, for this thousand pounds. No touch. I have a, a grandson, my third grandchild. I was with them in Canada not too long ago, and I, I love the way he sometimes responds. You know, typical, tough, Western child. Now, now sit down. No, sit down. <laughs> she will say no before she thinks. And that tells you of where they, have, they come from. Now, now it's called coming. No, come inside. <laughs> and and, and we, we must learn to respond to Christ. In a way that will prove that he is the Lord of our lives. He's the Lord of our lives. I have, my wife and I are taking care of um, a young man from Yemen. I was in Nairobi a couple of years ago to speak in the meeting. On my way back to Ghana, I had to spend the night in Addis Ababa. On the flight from between Nairobi and Addis Ababa, in fact, at the airport, I met this young man. And when I sat down, I started praying, and he, he shouted hallelujah. So I quickly went to sit by him. I said, who are you? And he said, I'm Najib. That's a pseudonym. We have hidden his name because of, for security reasons. And he said, I am from Yemen. I said, what? From where? Yemen. I said, for many, many years, we have been praying for Yemen. You are a Yemen Christian. Yemeni Christian. He said, yes. And I said, let me tell you my story. I was in the bathroom when Jesus came there. And it was a hard decision because I was rich, married with three girls. And they took away my business, my wife, my children. Few weeks after, I was involved in an accident that nearly came. Everybody on the vehicle died. I was in coma for some time and later on when God's grace visited me. And for this moment, I was in crutches. And when I met him, he was finishing a school, a Bible college in the Anglican church in Cairo. And later on, we started helping pay his school fees. Today, he's in a university doing a, um, a first degree. He did a diploma there in Uganda. Look, he was willing to, he said, his friend said that we cannot go the way you're going. He said, if you really meet Jesus, you'll be ready to die. And he said, anyway, our people are dying for the cause which they do understand. Why can't I die for the cause I understand? Will you say amen? <laughs> so brethren, it's, it's so important. That's why I even made the proposition that, look, it is a question of conviction. Are you convinced? Now, it is also the measure of the believer's consecration. Obedience is the measure of your consecration. If you're obedient, it means that you, it, how far you go proves that it's a measure of your consecration. How far do you want to go for Christ? That is, that, that is a measure of how committed you are. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God. Look at Abraham. Now I know you fear God. Genesis and chapter number 22, verse number 12. Don't do anything to him. I know now you fear God. Obedience is the measure of your consecration. Are you there? Don't do anything to him. Now I know your obedience is a measure of your consecration. But then, church, there is, you ask the question, obedience is the key. The, 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 I mean, the other thing is that obedience is the key to everything in kingdom life. Uh, there is no substitute to it. 
It is the key to cleansing and holiness. There is no other way to maintain a life of holiness except to walk constantly in God's light. Keep clean by obeying. One step away from the light is a step away from the cleansing blood. 1 John 1 7. If we are in the light, we are in the, we walk in the light. We want to obey God. I was, I was in, you know, my driver in my vehicle in Accra and somebody calls from a place called Ansuma in Accra. You know, um, middle class area. And they said, he was weeping, weeping at the other end. I said, Reverend, I've sinned against the Lord. And I said, praise the Lord. He said, Reverend, I said, I've sinned. I said, the fact that you are crying means that you are a Christian. Before, because you see, before I became a Christian, I never cried about sin. Did you ever cry about fornication? I said, now you know him. Tell him, Father, I have blown it. I have done wrong. And that will be okay. He said, Reverend, is that true? I said, yes. Tell him, tell your father. And he will cleanse you. A few days later, I said, Reverend, thank you very much. <laughs> See? Hallelujah. He was willing to turn away. A child of God, he sins. Now, he confesses. May God give you the same grace. Again, obedience is the key to communion and fellowship with God. It is as we walk in the light that we have fellowship with God. 1 John 1, 7 again. Disobedience quickly destroys fellowship. To claim fellowship with and to live in obedience, to claim to have fellowship with God and to live in obedience are incompatible. No, no, they don't go together. In fact, you yourself know it. Last week I preached at um, um, Faith Baptist Church in Tottenham and there were several people came forward. I, I called some of them during the week to find out what I should pray with them about. And one person said, relationship. I said, I understand. Don't go any further. You are living in a room. He said, yes, yes. He said, okay. Now, what is your decision? He said, I'm going to walk out. He said, good girl, good girl. Because you see, the devil is a liar. He says, if I don't give in to him, I, he will not do this. You are disobeying God. It won't help you. It won't help you. It will catch up. Don't go there. Because the word says that, oh, free everything. Uh, you, know, you know the story of, of uh, sex life in, in, in the world today. Even if you say, no, I won't go this way. They say, no, no help. Take your help. My help come from the Lord. And I pray that you interpret the same thing into your life. Get out of that mess. You are, you are of set value. Put value on you. Put value on your life. Put value on your life. Amen. Now, before I end, let me say this. Obedience is the key to blessing. Do you want to be blessed? He said, the Bible says that, you know, he will be blessed in all that he does. Huh? He who walks in the light will be blessed. Now, what I love about Malachi, in, in, in Malachi, we all know the story about how he said, we should give. Huh? And he will bless. If you obey, then he will be working. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his, what a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And all who trust and obey. Will you say amen? amen? Lastly, obedience is the key to kingdom advance. And I love this. It's the key to kingdom advance. <laughs> Are you going to see anything happen in the kingdom of God that will move you from where you are to another level. How are you going to go there? The vehicle is obedience. Amen? The only vehicle that will take you to places of honor, that will bring you into glory, into places where God wants you to be through obedience. You look at the Bible. Anytime God wanted to move somebody to another level, it was through some tests that they passed so that they could go to another level. Will you say amen? amen. Abraham said, now I know. You are now, I know, will come. And when it comes, pass the test. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Church, we are in it together. I am not perfect. <laughs> I never, never think that Reverend Asante is perfect. No, no, no. We are all programs. I come to encourage you, sir. Together, we will forge ahead in obedience. Will you say Amen. So we have just come to encourage you and challenge your heart and my heart. Now let me ask you this morning. 
Maybe you want to stop this morning and say, Lord, I am not in proper alignment. I, I want to be in proper alignment with you and begin to obey with all my heart. Lord, things are not good. Please help me out. I want to trust you in a new way. Will you do that? If you want to just slip your hand, every eye close, every head bow, say, Lord, I want a new deal with you. Let your hand go up. Be honest. Be sincere. Lord, I want a new deal. God bless you, young lady. Yes. Lord, I want a new deal. Yes. God bless you. Yes. God bless you there. Yes. Lord, I want a new deal with you. I, I don't want to be a hypocrite. God bless you, young lady. Yes. Yes. Be honest with God. God bless you, sister. Please, be serious. Now, it's not all about sexual immorality. No, no. Sometimes it's some bitterness, some pain, something that is not making you live right. If you raise up your hand, just walk here. I want to pray with you quickly. Time is running. Come quickly. Lord, thy word I buy. And our footsteps guide us. Whom is truth believeth. Light and joy receive. I want to go on my knees with you. Will you join me? Let's go on our knees. Let's ask for mercy and grace this morning. Will you say with me, Lord Jesus, I ask for mercy. I ask for grace. Forgive me my sins. I want to live for you. I want to be obedient for the rest of my life. I have no strength and so I open my heart to you. Blessed Holy Spirit, come in, change me, transform me, help me. For I love you and I want to serve you. Thank you this morning for giving me the grace even to come to ask for grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, bless your people and help them out. Let them be willing to obey you. Let them not yield to the deceptions of the flesh and this world and the deceptions of the devil. Let them live for you a life that is completely yielded to you. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> I want to, we don't have much time, but I, what I do is that, Pastor, I just will ask the uh, counselor, we want the names for the next three months. We'll be praying for them so that they will be strengthened. Okay? Yeah, please, will you follow? He can, let's give them a hand. Let's encourage them. Let's encourage them. <laughs> Hallelujah. My time is gone. But let me tell you this. Church, we must bring our offering to him. Will you say amen? amen. We must bring our offering to him. And I pray to God that if you have not been faithful this morning, you begin the journey of obedience. Will you say amen? amen? Will you take your offering? That you take it together. Titan offering. Titan offering. Titan offering. Uh, in Ghana, most of our churches, we take the tithe differently. Uh, Steve Nova said that the tithe is God's kingdom income tax. <laughs> the offering is God's desire from you as a devotion. You know, to prove that you love. After the tithe, it's income tax. If you don't pay, you know what the British government will do. God will not take you to jail. But the consequences are more disastrous. <laughs>